How many of you believe that he is God by himself? <laughs> he does not need an election. He does not campaign for his office. All powers in heaven and on earth have been given to the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is all authority. He does not need anyone to confer authority upon him. Lift up your hands and worship him this morning. You are God all by yourself. There's no controversy. We thank you, eternal rock of ages, for this day. Thank you for what you have planned and purpose for your people today. Thank you for the entrance of your word that brings light and understanding to the simple. We trust you, Father, for that creative word that will cause a turnaround in the lives of so many people today. In Jesus' mighty name. Psalm 19, verse 1 to 6. Psalm 19. Verse number one to six, he reads, and I quote, The heavens declare the glory of God. If you choose to shut your mouth, the heavens will declare it. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the farmer man shows his handiwork. Day unto day, utter speech. I'm not sure you understand the language of thunders. Day unto day author speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, no language, where their voice is not heard. You may not understand them, <laughs> but they're speaking. Their line has gone out throughout all the earth. They don't need any cable under the sea. Your internet can shut down. No one can shut God out. Is he mutable? You cannot mute his voice. Is anybody hearing me this morning? I understand two days ago that the internet something, there was a glitch and cans airlines and airplanes and flights were cancelled. Come on now. We still have wings on. We can go to heaven and be back in a moment in the spirit. That's not a joke. That's the reality of who we are. The airline has gone out through all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Which is like a bridegroom. <laughs> I don't know how you got married. <laughs> if you got married, uh, we are nobody worse. And uh, we are nothing happened. And uh, uh, where you do not come out in style. And there was no photo shoot. You can't understand this. When the sun is coming out in the morning, it's like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Do you know the heat and the light of the sun has never waned? The sun has never lost its power. Every time it comes out, it shines brighter. It sends the heat to the world. Who is like unto our God? All heavens declare... <laughs> The glory of the rain. Who can compare with the beauty of the Lord? With the beauty of the Lord forever. Forever, Lord. Forever <laughs> you will be the lamb upon the throne. You are the lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knee. I gladly bow and kneel to worship you alone. All heavens declare. Oh. Lamb upon the throne. The Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knees, Lord. I bow my knees to you today. I 
I refuse to bow to any idol. I bow to you only. Sing it one more time. All heavens are clear. The glory of the risen Lord. The glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare? Who can compare? With the beauty of the Lord. With the beauty of the Lord. Forever. The Lamb the upon the throne. The Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knees, Lord. I gladly bow my knees. To worship you alone. To worship you alone. My job alone. <laughs> My job alone. If you know what I know, if you can hear what I've heard and I'm hearing, there will be no service today but dancing. Because a widespread joy is about to hit Nigeria. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm so glad and I'm so thankful to you, Father. Because what you have hidden from the wise and the noble, you have revealed unto babes. Keep on reigning, Father. Do what you please in this land. Let there be a widespread joy in our nation. From the east to the west, from the north to the south, in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people said... Hallelujah. Good morning. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Welcome to a very sobering, but definitely edifying session of Saturday Scriptures. Today's study is focused on the star or the celebrity worship syndrome. Say that with me, the star. the star. Or the celebrity worship syndrome. You can call it the star worship syndrome or the celebrity worship syndrome. This is part 10 of the series titled, The Preeminence of Jesus Christ in His Church. How many of you know that he is a bright morning star? He is the star of Bethlehem. But there are those who are trying to compete with him to have preeminence in the church he bought with his blood. Somebody say, fa, 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 fa. Remember the advert? Uh -huh. It is a well-known universal truth that people are drawn to film stars musical icons, football stars, iconic warriors with badges of victories like that of David, the shepherd boy who killed the bear, the lion, and the giant. 
Therefore, it should surprise no one that David had six wives at the age of 30. I'm going somewhere. Second Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David grew stronger and stronger. And the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. That will happen to your enemy soon. In the mighty name of Jesus. As you are growing stronger and stronger, they will be growing weaker and weaker. As they sweet you, it will depend on them. Sons were born to David in Hebron. His firstborn was Amnon by Ahinoam the Jezreelites. His second, Chiliab by Abigail, the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. The third, Absalom, the son of Maka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. The fourth, Adonijah, the son of Agit. The fifth, Shephatiah, the son of Abital. And the sixth, Ethereum, by David's wife, Eglah. These were born to David in Hebron. Six sons by six women. My father was like David. Every woman had just one child. Papa, papa. The one that has two, one will die. Papa, he marry another one. Brands, serial polygamies. By the time he got out 12, he had 22 children. And uh, 21 are gone. I'm still standing. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and spoke, saying, Indeed, we are your bone and your flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and be ruler over Israel. Therefore, all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel at what age? David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At 30, David had six wives. It seems to me, and I'm not making a general statement because there are exceptions, uh, there are few exceptions to this general rule. My wife is an exception. She didn't marry me because I had anything. Two pairs of trousers. No, 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 that was when I got to Lagos. That was two pairs of trousers and three shirts. At the time she married me, I think I have a few shirts. From being best, a few suits, from being best man to my friends who got married, I was best man like five or seven times just to acquire suits. <laughs> two pairs of shoes, black and brown. She bought me my first navy blue pair of shoes. And when I went to propose to her, it was over soft drink and grand knot at the highest place in Ikoyi then called the Atlantic Hall, 14th floor of Ikoyi Hotel. I couldn't afford dinner. The grand note was given free of charge. And I proposed to her, if you marry me, you enjoy your life, you live in bliss forever. If you don't, you have to suffer for a long time. <laughs> she just laughed. And then after, a man with red Mercedes Benz, like brand new, what do you call it? Cheroba. Drove in and said, I'd like to take you to uh, Eco Eco Club to eat. What is it? I've forgotten the name of the thing because I don't eat. Club sandwich. I said, What's club sandwich? And so she said, Oh, my friend said we could come together. I said, Who is your friend? That boy, poor, I don't decrease. If you follow her, him, I'm out of here. Goodbye to you. But if you stay, he said, sorry, we can't come. Bam. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you want to be husband, be husband. Uh -huh. Okay. So there are exceptions to the rule. But it seems to me that women are easily drawn to very rich and powerful men. Celebrities, musical icons, entertainment gurus, and gallant soldiers. These women themselves are movers and shakers in society. Sometimes with multiple 
marriages. They enjoy jumping from bed to bed, looking for where uh, the fish is well cooked. No insult is intended. People of God, it is very possible that this fatal attraction is the reason a doll like Abigail was found living in the nest of a vulture named Nabal, who was very rich but also foolish and churlish. 1 Samuel 25, 1 to 3. You'll be wondering how could such a, a, a decent, uh, wise woman be married uh, to a churlish, foolish man? Is it because of the family name, Caleb? Did she investigate before she invested her life? Then Samuel died and the Israelites gathered together and lamented for him and buried him at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Piran. Now there was a man in Meon whose business was in Carmel. And the man was very rich. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was sharing his sheep in Carmel. The name of the man was... Nabal, do you know what it means? Fool. Those who named him knew him properly. It was named on his naming ceremony, they knew he was Akodanier. Apologies to painters. Mm -hmm. And the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance or countenance. But the man was harsh and evil in his doings. He was of the house of Caleb. Dear friends, what blinds the souls of those attracted to these film stars, gallant soldiers, and musical icons, and football stars, especially the ungodly among them, is called the Star Syndrome. The Star Syndrome. And in case you do not know, magicians in the pulpits are not any different from this class of people. Their fans club are not only victims of soul ties, they are also driven to worship and hearken to their celebrated heroes. Acts of the Apostle 8, verse 9 to 11. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practice sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that it was someone great to whom they all, they all, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is a great power of God. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. Acts 13, 1 to 3. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger. Niger don't go carry last. Lucius of Cyrene, meaning who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As a minister to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul. Some people are going to be separated today. In the name of Jesus. Separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Next, verse 6. Verse number 6. Now when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain who? Sorcerer. They are everywhere. A false prophet, but a Jew, whose name was? <laughs> not sure you didn't see. I, I, I'm not sure you saw, okay? A church on the internet who brought star beer to their church and lifted it up and said, a star beer is shining, so you will shine. 
And the people said, Amen. That's how bad these magicians had held the minds of people and had astonished them. This bad Jesus was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But the early man, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, we stood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, <laughs> this is where a change of name took place, filled with the Holy Spirit, look intently at him. I'm not sure you know what the name Paul means. Small. It's not in size. It's in who is inside. And said, oh, fool of all deceit and fraud, you son of the devil, uh -uh, a Jew, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a darkness fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed. When he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. From these two stories, um, by Simon the sorcerer in Samaria, and by Jesus, uh, otherwise called Elimas the sorcerer, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, described as an intelligent man, it shows that both the ignorant and intelligent people can be caught in the web of sorcery. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are. If you don't have Jesus on the inside, you can easily fall victim. They just need to rasmatize you and perform certain things. And before you know it, they throw you at okra with pomolas. I said, Ben, in Aha, uh -huh. you were green to, uh, to church last Sunday. Aha. Uh -huh. By the time they say two, three things, you are swept off your feet and you begin to hearken unto them. As I mentioned in the course of this series, we will take true servants of God, anointed, and sent by the Holy Spirit to deliver men and women, boys and girls, from these practitioners of sorcery. Thank God for the lives of Deacon Philip, who became an evangelist later, and Apostle Paul in the church back then, and I believe God they will rise again in the church today. Can I hear amen? amen. A simple question. Why do sorcerers and magicians still thrive in the church today? I'm glad you ask. Let's read the story of the conversion of the sorcerer in Samaria again. Acts 8, 13. Let's read the story of his conversion. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Can I tell you the truth? All he saw was signs and miracles. He did not encounter Jesus. He was amazed by miracles. And that's why people troop to such magicians today. Because they don't know the difference between lying wonders and satanic power. And all kinds of miracles and signs. They just run after them. You know, I just say, get up here. I'm going to wave my hand. A force is going to come in that will shake you. What does that mean? When the Holy Spirit came the day of Pentecost, they were all seated. And don't think we do not know it because we did it before. Many of you are witnesses. Pastor Olus will carry his oil and follow me. I'll dip my hand. I do like this. Everybody will scatter. Chairs will be broken. Power! Until God hit me, he said, that's not what I call you to do. The man who pioneered it is dead now. You like to fall down and get up with nothing? Did Simon really believe? Wait till the apostles showed up. This amazed pretender and a time bomb planted by the enemy to cause an implosion was exposed for who he really was. Acts 8, 14 to 24. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, 
they sent Peter and John to them. Who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. I, sh I hope you really understand the line we just read. When they heard that Samaria had believed or had received Christ, the church sent Paul and John. Paul and John did not say it's a good idea. They were sent. If you get up because you heard something without being sent, whatever happens to you, you have to account for it. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they lay hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw, that's all. When Simon saw that through the laying on of the hand, apostles' hand, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Why? I'd like to bounce back into celebrity status. Saying, give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands will receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, your money perish with you, because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You've neither part nor portion. Did he really believe? You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of God. How can you be born again, be, 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 and your heart is not right with God? There are many demonized deacons in churches today, waiting for opportunity to attack. Then Peter told him, repent therefore of this your wickedness. And so did he repent before? And pray God if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. What did, he, what did he say to all this? For I see, Peter said, you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. You are envious of what you have seen the King Philip do here and you want to bounce back. You are, you are poisoned by bitterness. You are bound by bitterness. Then Simon answered, look, I'm not interested in deliverance. Just pray for me. Simon answered and said, pray to the Lord for me that none of the things which you have spoken may come upon me. Did he really believe? That's why you find such people in the church today who are still preoccupied by their pre-conversion dispositions. They are as confused and confounded like the Samaritans of old who claim to fear God, but instead serve their own idols. Second Kings chapter 17. Truth be told, these people don't fear God. They only pay lip service to the fear of God. Second Kings 17, 24 to 34. Then the king of Assyria brought people from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Amath, and from Savivim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they took possession of Samaria and dwell in its cities. And it was so at the beginning of their dwelling there that they did not, are you participating in this? That they did not fear the Lord. Therefore, the Lord sent lions among them, which killed some of them. So they spoke to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations whom you have removed and placed in the cities of Samaria do not know the rituals of of the God of the land. Therefore, <laughs> he has sent lions among them, and indeed they are killing them because they do not know the rituals of the God of the land. That's how Aborisha, that's how they think there must be ritual. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, send their hunters, soldiers, Ogboju Babalao, no, send there one of the priests, just one, whom you brought from there. Let him go and dwell there, and let him teach them the rituals of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt where? In Bethel, the house of God, and taught them how they should. That's the ritual. Fear the Lord. However, every nation continued to make gods of his own, and put them in the shrines on the high places where the Samaritans had made every nation in the cities where they dwelt. The men of Babylon made what? Sukkot Benoth. The men of Kut made Negal. The men of Hamad made Ashima. And the Avais made Nibhaz and Tatak. 
And the Sephavites burned their children in fire to Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Savivim. So they feared the Lord. Hello? They did? So they feared the Lord, and from every class they appointed for them priests of the high places who sacrificed for them in the shrines of the high places. Did they fear the Lord? Verse 33. They feared the Lord, yes, served their own gods, according to the rituals of the nations from among whom they were carried away. To this day, they continue practicing the former rituals. They do not fear the Lord. Did they really fear the Lord? No, they don't. They're looking for what works. Why would God not send lions to destroy them again? Because there was a priest in the land. For the sake of that one priest who was teaching the fear of the Lord to those who could listen to him, God would restrain his anger. This man jumping up and down, polluting the atmosphere, they really do not know that one crying at the top of his voice to restrain their excesses is not their enemy, is their friend. When he withdraws, that's the end. Your calamity will befall you. Because you don't fear the Lord, you're just doing crowd attention, attracting them, pulling them off the standard of the word of God so that men are no longer rooted in Christ, but rooted in your false teachings. Do you realize, brothers and sisters, that the Bible states that Elimas the sorcerer was a Jew? Yet Paul the apostle said he was a son of the devil, full of deceit and fraud. Please take it or leave it. Their counterparts are scattered all over the Pentecostal and evangelical fields today, deceiving and exploiting both their ignorant and intelligent victims. Sergeant Paulus was intelligent, but his intelligence could not withstand or match sorcery. That's why you find professors going about celebrating the God of Ion. Stand to your feet at this juncture. I want you to pray with me. Lord, let all the enemies of righteousness who are perverting the straight ways of the Lord be exposed for who they are in our land and bring their deception to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let God expose their evil intentions. Destroy their methodologies. Break the snares over the people. Let the souls of men and women, boys and girls, escape from the snare of the fowler. Lord, we ask that all the enemies of righteousness who are perverting the straight ways of the Lord be exposed for who they are in our land and bring their deception to an end. I can't hear you pray, friends. This is a serious matter. They must be put out of business in the name of Jesus. Those who are righteous and those who fear the Lord, the Lord will continue to enlarge their cause and add to their number. Those who are ignorant among them, the entrance of his word will bring light to them today. But those who have hardened their hearts to exploit and take advantage of God's people, in the name of Jesus, that every antique be destroyed completely, in Jesus' mighty name, and let their charms walk no longer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer point number two, Acts 13 verse 12. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching. Was the Lord there teaching? Did Jesus show up there teaching? Who showed up teaching? Paul and Barnabas. But who did they represent? May God raise you up. May the teaching of the Lord astonish people who were cornered by soothsayers in the name of Jesus, and may they be set free by the entrance of his word. Pray, pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, may the astonishing 
teaching of the Lord of this nature permeate our land so that intelligent people and even ignorant people can be liberated from their ignorance and from such weak intelligence that cannot match sorcery. We thank you, eternal rock of ages, for what you have begun to do in the church in Nigeria and in the nations of the earth. Bring their control to an end. Let every chain be broken and destroyed. Set your people free from captivity and from slavery in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people said, Amen. You may be seated. Haven't prayed. There's an important question we need to answer today. Do you want to know the question? Will these ungodly stars, quote unquote, ever stop their polluting the church of the living God? Will they ever stop? Or would they be here forever? Would they ever stop? If yes, how? My unequivocal answer is yes. As it happened in the palace of Pharaoh, the time came when the magician says, this is the finger of God. <laughs> the how is power evangelism. As Jesus the Lord sent his disciples in twos into the harvest field, it will happen when very well equipped saints of God a thrust into the mission field. A clear example is what Samson did with 300, just 300 foxes that carry fire in their tails into the harvest field of the Philistines. Judges chapter 15, verses 4 and 5. Judges 15, 4 and 5. Then Samson went and caught 300 foxes. Don't ask me how did he do it. Because he didn't go into a zoo to catch them. If God is ready to do a thing, he will make it happen. Do you know that all the animals in the ark came walking into Noah? He wasn't catching them everywhere. When time is ready, when well-trained and seasoned missionaries from the church, brothers and sisters, equipped by the power of God, when God releases them and thrusts them into the harvest field, you will see what will happen to these charlatans. Then Samson went and caught 300 foxes, and he took torches, turned the foxes tail to tail, and put a torch between each pair of tails. When he had set the torches on fire, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines and burn up both the shocks and the standing grain, as well as the vineyards and olive groves. You will burn down their temple. You will burn down everything they carry in the name of Jesus. Amen. However, while we are getting ready to launch the rocket of power evangelism in the last quarter of the year 2024, my deep concern today is for those who migrate from world-based churches and follow these wandering stars. They're my concern. Because if they remain in that forest field, they'll be born too. Now God and his mercies will rescue them before it is too late. Because they once enjoy fellowship with the saints of God. Circumstances, situations have derailed them, defeated them. We need God to show mercy and pull them out of fire before it is too late. Can I hear amen? I spent quality time with some of our leaders yesterday, getting them ready for this power evangelism rocket that we will launch in the last quarter of 2024. You will not be happy sitting down. What lie? <laughs> I am not joking. By the time you get hold of the truth that is coming your way, you will become unsatisfied any day you have not spoken about Jesus to someone. There will be such a deep-seated hunger in you to reach out and talk about Jesus to someone. And ten men will hold the skirt of a Jew and say, show us our God. Oh, why are you not teaching that to the entire church? It's, it's called systematic. It's a system. Do you understand me? 
It will be taught to the whole church. And the last quarter, we launch the rocket of power evangelism like never before. Charismatic revolutionary army will be a child's play. God is keeping the best to the last. And you count yourself privileged to be among those who will be thrust into the harvest field. Can I hear? Amen. In addition to that, while you are launching your rocket here and shooting here and burning down their enemy, we will arise and go into the realm of the spirit and begin to challenge all these charlatans in what we call in the defense of the gospel. One by one we'll label and list their blunders which they have brought into the body of Christ and men will sit down to say, this is crooked way, this is straight way. Except you put the straight by the crooked, you do not know which one is the right stick. But that is going to happen in our nation. It's not a moment of truth. It's called in the defense of the gospel. Men will arise and shut down their shops. And if you say, Paka anywhere, they'll say, eh! Like he said to me, <laughs> uh, Esso said to me yesterday, after we had gone to UI for Watergate uh, uh, conference uh, uh, for about three days, and then we said, none of you is a pastor. Stop answering the name of a pastor over your fellow students. What happens when you close campus? Where are your flock? And said, we finish. And one of them said, let all the pastors be behind. And the people are going to say, you know they hear what? <laughs> you know that this one don't, don't finish. You know they hear what? Then go hear word. And they would draw words. They would drop it down in the name of Jesus Christ. No, it's not in we. It's real word. Can I hear amen? It's my prayer today that those who are hooked by sorcery will profit right now from Gamaliel's counsel before they get to the point of no return, the point where they will amount to nothing as they get scattered or dispersed into oblivion when the apostates who had bewitched them perish. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. 34 to 37. Acts 5, 34 to 37. Then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people, and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Theodas rose up. Okay, Theodas. He rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. What happened to them? He was slain, and all who obeyed him was scattered and came to nothing. May God keep people from, be, from coming to nothing in the name of Jesus Christ. After this man, Judas of Galilee, it's not only Judas Iscariot, too. Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the censors. And that's factors influencing location of industry. You understand me? When census is, is just conducted, you know where it is thickly populated, you know where it's thinly populated, and you go locate your church. It's called uh, factors influencing location of industry. That's how churches are planted anyhow this day. After this man, Judas of Galilee, rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him who are dispersed. I want you to stand up to your feet. All those who have left Bible-based churches running after this cloud without water, the Lord God Almighty will deliver them so that they do not perish with those they follow. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voices and pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we stand in the gap between the porch and the altar for men who have been lured away in the name of Jesus, into following empty clouds without water. Those who are plucked from roots who are rootless, they are not rooted in anything mentored by nobody. They just become sudden champions, drafting people and drifting them away. Lord, deliver them before they are dispersed and they amount to nothing. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, that you will rescue them and bring them back into their senses. 
in Jesus mighty name. Please be seated. People of God, the practitioners of lawlessness and those who are deceived and are deluded by Satan's power, signs and lying wonders, we have themselves to blame at the end for not heeding the warnings they have received in this timely message. Let us listen to the Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter 7, 21 to 23. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And Jesus said to them, ah, no, you didn't. No, he didn't argue with them, they did. And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. You are a user. You just use me to enjoy a good life. I never knew you. Depart from you, from me. You will practice lawlessness or iniquity. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 to 12. Let's, let's, let's decode what they use to hold men and bind them. They refuse to let their prison door be opened. But the one who opened the prison door had come. It is too late. For the mystery of lawlessness or iniquity is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. With what? Who said all power in heaven and on earth have been given to me? If you do not know the difference between the lamb and the lamb that speak with the voice of the dragon, you think power is power. The coming of the lawless one is according to the walking of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. It's called aletheia, called truth. They do not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, because they do not receive the love of the truth, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The problem with deception is that deceived deceive people think they are right when they are wrong. Tell your neighbor, be careful who you follow. And whose teachings influence you? Someone may ask also, how can we distinguish shining stars from wandering stars? A few minutes to do this, so bear with me. Number one, shining stars are those who turn many to righteousness. You don't find them turn the grace of God into lasciviousness and said you can do what you please. You are under grace. They do not water down the gospel. They turn many to righteousness. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars for some time, forever and ever. As we progress in this study... You will discover that their standard practice of the, of the shining stars, their standard practice is to give glory to God. They do not attract attention to themselves or receive worship from men. Look through your Bible. We have it on record that when the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them, none of them exhibited any celebrity status among brethren. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, 32 to 33. Now the multitude of those who believed, including the apostles, were one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but he had all things in common. And with great power, not small, great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. Example of this character trait abounds in the early church. Number one, let's listen to how Peter prevailed on Cornelius not to worship him. 
Acts 10, 24 to 26. And the following day they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Why? An angel introduced Peter to him. But Peter lifted him up saying, stand up. I myself am also a man. Number two, Philip the evangelist did not see himself as a star performer in Samaria. He would have rebelled when an angel told him to leave the city for the desert. I can't him you you alone. Look at the revival going on here. Who is going to disciple the people? I've just started apostolic training school for them. You cannot shift me now. You cannot move me now. He was taken from the city into the desert. And from the desert, he did not return to Samaria. His power sport but was carried into Azotus and subsequently to the cities of Caesarea. You find that in Acts 28, 26. Acts 8, 26. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip while the revival was going on. People were clapping. People were being saved. They were amazed by his, the miracles that God did through him as he was preaching Jesus and the kingdom of God. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. <laughs> 39 and 40. Now when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord cut off Philip away. That transportation system will be restored before Jesus returns. You can do whatever you like to your internet. Uh, that time is coming. <laughs> now, go and listen to the message titled, The Power of the Age to Come. Now, when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Did he return to Samaria? Well, Philip was found where? At Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. If you die as a local champion in one spot, other cities will evade you or elude you. Paul and Silas, number three, actually tore their own clothes in order to prevent the people in Lystra to treat them like their gods. They brought garlands. They brought sacrifices. They tore their garments. And said, we are men like you. People of God, the wandering stars behave differently because they have lost track of focus their modus operandi is to turn the grace of God into lewdness or lasciviousness. They constantly peddle the gospel and walk according to their own loss while they mouth grace-swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. This is why we must fight, contend, and do battle when apostasy arises, when false teachers emerge, and when the truth of God is attacked. Come with me to the introduction to the epistle of Jude, and you will see what God wants us to do in this season and while we are rising at this moment in the defense of the gospel. Jude, introduction. He reads, and I quote, fight, contend, do battle when apostasy arises, when false teachers emerge, when the truth of God is at heart. It is time to fight for the faith. Only believers who are spiritually in shape can answer the summons. Jude, you read from verse 3 to verse 13. It will shock you what is there. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Why? For certain men have crept in unnoticed. They dress like us and talk like us. They blow tongues and they blow scriptures. And we just say, yeah, 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 without any discernment. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lewdness 
and denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse number 12. Who are these men? They are sports in your love feasts. While they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves, they are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead like Goliath, pulled out by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars, for whom is reserved the hottest part of hell, the blackness of darkness. Who are they? Verse 16. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own laws, and the mouth grace swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there will be mockers in the last time who will walk according to their own ungodly laws. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. Dear friends, do you know that those in this category of wandering stairs are actually classified by God long ago as pastors of the people, for the people, and by the people? Unfortunately, God decided to leave them in his sanctuary to continue to minister to the people, be in charge of their offerings, but forbade them to come near to him, to minister to him, or to come near his holy things and into the most holy place. Ezekiel 44, verse 10 to 14. Ezekiel 44, 10 to 14. And the Levites who went far from me, when Israel went astray, who strayed away from me after their idols, they shall bear their iniquity. Yeah, they shall be ministers in my sanctuary. That's why you do not know. Once you see signboard in the name of Jesus, whether there is PLC there or not, these signboards shall follow them that believe. Yeah, they shall be ministers in my sanctuary as gatekeepers of the house and ministers of the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people and they shall stand before them to minister to them. They are people's pastor, pastor of the people, for the people, and by the people. They don't gain access into the Holy of Holies or into the presence of God to minister to God before they can receive from him to minister to people. Because they minister to them before their idols and cause the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore, I've raised my hand in an oath against them, says the Lord God, that they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall not come near me to minister to me as priests. Not come near any of my holy things, nor into the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. These are out, outer court ministers. Nevertheless, I'll make them keep charge of the temple. You find them in all kinds of Pentecostal associations for all its work and for all that has to be done in it. But there's a class of people. They are sons of Zadok. Zadok means righteousness. Ezekiel 44, 15 to 16. These sons of righteousness are those who will minister to God. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, who kept charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near me to minister to me, and they shall stand before me to offer to me the fat and the blood, says the Lord God. As I round up our study today, I'd like to prepare you for next Sunday. I want to address two major people next Sunday. Number one, every true pastor in the house, elder, deacon, or minister, they must watch out not to allow themselves to be treated like a celebrity. They have a way of goading you into disaster, telling you there's nobody like you. You wait till next Sunday. I strongly believe that Jesus the Lord will deliver us. This is why he said to us in Luke 17, that after you have done everything you are supposed to do, consider yourself an unworthy servant. Luke 17, 7 to 10. So likewise you, and which of you having a servant plowing or tending sheep, we said to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat. But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper? Guard yourself and serve me till I've eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank 
That servant, because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are profitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. When you feel finish preaching like a house on fire and they are clapping for you and saying there's nobody like you, they are digging your grave. You must watch it and run away from celebrity status. I'll come back to the second category of people, those who are already held by sorcerers and magicians in the church to show you the way out of it so that you can be free. I love you. Remain blessed.